going to go a little bit deeper into this. And I'm going to try to tell you, if you don't transfer it to him, he can't transform it to for you. What are you saying? What I'm saying is, if you'll put it into his hands, he'll take you farther and bless you more than you can ever imagine. But people don't want to do it God's way. Here's the funny thing. I've noticed this in 16 years of ministry. There'll be people that argue against that. But they don't have a problem sitting down there spending $100 easy trying to buy a Powerball ticket. You hear what I'm about to tell you? You're going to get struck by lightning before you hit that. If you can't, you're, trying to, you're transferring that to the hands of the government. And let me tell you, they ain't going to transform nothing good for you. If you're putting your trust in the government, we need to have you in this altar tonight. <laughs> but no, think about this. If you want to hear what I'm telling you tonight, God took two little fish and a loaf and fed a multitude. Because they put it in his hands. You know what the whole deal of it is? People want to have it their way. Their rebellious ways before God. You want to know why God ain't opening the windows of heaven and pouring out a blessing? Because God cannot bless disobedience. Did you hear me? God cannot and will not bless disobedience. The point of it is, it goes back. If you really love him, I won't have to compel you. And by the way, I don't look at records. It's between you and God. No. That way I can preach on it and not know who I'm, if I'm hitting anybody or not. No, the point what I'm trying to tell you is you don't have a, people don't have a problem going to red box, slapping it in there. They don't have a problem with the multitude of the big thing, the things of the world. The problem is many have left the first love. Many have left the first love. And I'm not just talking about that. I'm talking about time and talents too. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh. You owe God your time and you owe him your talents. I got a talent to run my mouth and that's the reason I'm up here. A calling. <laughs> I got place to big it on me. To open it to speak the word of God. Think about it. People want to know why they ain't. Why? It seems like God ain't blessing. Because maybe you've neglected him. That's between you and God. Maybe he's up there blowing on your efforts. Maybe just like Hagee, I told them, you need to consider your ways. Let me tell you something, Houston Hell. We want a revival of God. We need to consider our ways on our knees before God. Amen. I'm telling you, I don't think God's done here yet. I'm telling you, God sent me here for a purpose, and I'm going to see that purpose through. And let me tell you tonight, if you want the blessings of God, Put him first. And I'll tell you, when you get blessed by God, the whole world will know it. What you do in secret, I believe sometimes he'll reward you openly. I believe that. I believe God can bless you beyond measure. But it comes back to getting back to our first love. You think about it. He's gonna, he'll bless you. But right here in Israel, Everything they were doing 
because they had neglected him. He was blowing apart. They were trying to build it. Can you imagine? I planted my seed and ain't no rain. Amen? Boy, that would get frustrating, wouldn't it? You worked all summer long during the planting season. You plowed it. I'm not a gardener. I think giant does good on it. And I think those who give me the produce does good. But I know it's a lot of work in the garden. Can you imagine you plant it in there? But you never get a bit of rain on it. Because the heaven is stayed. Everything you were doing seems like it was corrupted. The whole time as they were neglecting God's house. Neglecting the things of God. Because they had left their first love in reality. He was blowing upon their futile efforts. He was showing, you can't accomplish nothing without me. Can I tell you tonight, we will not make it without Him. Our dependency is not upon this land. Our dependency is upon the Lord God Jehovah. It's time to get back to the first love. There were grave consequences. Not only for that, that in Israel, but listen. What He told the Ephesus church. This is a strong warning right here. He said this. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent. Notice that word repent. I like that word repent. It destroys a doctrine that's going around today. That you don't have to repent. If you didn't have to repent, why would Jesus tell Ephesus to repent? Amen. <laughs> he said do the first works. Listen to this or else. Here, here, here's the consequence. It's telling them what they need to do. Or else, I will come upon thee quickly, fast, unexpected, when you ain't looking for me. And he says, then I will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Anybody ever had a boss man that had the philosophy sh talk, that you heard him t tell somebody, shape up or ship out? That's pretty much what Jesus was telling them. He said, I'm gonna, he, he, he said you ain't going to ship out on your own, but he said, I'm the one that's going to send you out. He was saying, if you don't go back, guess what? Lord, I got to hurry. He said, there's a consequence to it. He says, I'll remove thy candlestick. He told, that's a strong warning right there. They're, they were to come back or they be, were to be removed. He tell you, he'll remove anyone in any congregation from its place and destiny in his kingdom that does not repent of their declining love. Did you hear me? How many is going to be married? You ain't going to be married long to somebody that half loves you, are you? How many is going to be, you, know, you ain't going to stay married long if you run around all the time, commit adultery, are you? That's what Jesus was saying. You want to love around with them? You ain't going to be married to me. You can't serve two. You'll cling to the one. He's looking for the whole heart. No doubt, there's consequences for forsaking the first love. And I ain't got the heart to do that. But let me tell you, let me get this in. Give me about 15 more minutes, please. But he did tell them, you can go back and do the first works over again. I believe if we got hope for this country, can I tell you, it's not going to start in 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue down there. And I know we need to really be in prayer for this election. I know we need to be in prayer for the government. But it ain't going to start that. It's got to start among God's people. It don't begin there. It begins in the house of God. 
Listen to what he says in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 14 and 15. If my people, notice that, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now my ears shall be open, shall, and my I ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. He told them four things there got my attention, and I'm not going to preach on them like I t- intended to. He told them to humble themselves. We must recognize that we need him. We must recognize we've fallen short. Maybe we have neglected him. That's humbling yourself. And we must manifest sorrow and recommit to the things of God. Amen. We must get back. Secondly, he said pray. God, People must cry out to him. We must learn to trust in him. Prayer must be earnest. And, it must, and I believe it can't, it's got to be sustained. What are you talking about? I don't believe you need to go weeks without praying. I believe a prayer life for God needs to be a daily basis where you talk to him, don't you? you got to turn from the wicked ways. Notice that word, turn. Repent, get back to God. We must renounce conformity to this world. This is how genuine revival begins. I forgot to put seek my face in there. But that's in there too, seek my face. We must diligently turn to God with a whole heart and long for his presence again. If revival's to come, we've got to get back to the first love. If we're going to survive the last days, we're going to have to get back to the first love. Amen. Getting back to the first love will produce tremendous blessings and results. Did you hear me? What did he tell them right here? He says, I'll be attentive to your prayer. He says, I'll hear you. I'll get in tune with you now, now that you've repented of your sin. That's what he was saying. He said, I've stayed away. I wouldn't hear you because of it. But now that you, you'll repent, I'll be attentive to it. He says, then he will forgive. He will cleanse. He will restore favor, presence, peace, truth, righteousness, and power among them. God will heal his people and their land. By pouring out rain. Anybody know what kind of rain I'm talking about? I'm talking about a spiritual rain, most importantly. But he was talking about a physical rain, too. But more importantly, he was talking about a spiritual rain. If the church, what needs to rain upon this land? Let me tell you what needs to rain upon this land. I'm telling you, we need a spiritual rain to fall from heaven again. We need the rain of the Holy Ghost to hit this land one more time. Anybody know what I'm talking about this night? I'm telling you, God said, I'll pour out the rain, the spiritual rain. Not only the physical, but the spiritual rain. If you come back to me, if you get back to where you need to be, I believe God will pour out his blessings like we ain't seen before. Let me tell you, God will give you favor too. You get the favor of God, you'll have the favor anywhere else you need it. I believe that. What he was saying. But it all boils down to getting that heart for Jesus again. It all boils down. I'm getting ready to close out with this. It all boils down. Is our heart, are we in love with him? Are we in love with him? Are we married to him? Or is it somebody we just want to date? He's just somebody we want to date and flirt around with. Can I tell you tonight, God ain't looking for dates again. He's looking for a marriage. He's not looking for somebody that's going to flirt with him. He's looking for somebody that's going to commit to him. Amen. Everyone's standing, brother. If you want to get ready to come, let me tell you the only church, 
the only hope we 